everyone. We must say hi to Sylvie first. Hi, Sylvie. Oh, there's my sweet girl. Oh, good girl. Oh, good kisses for mommy, too. Yeah, maybe she'll come say hi again. But right now she's on her chair looking out her window. Oh, good girl. Yams. Good girl. Hi everyone, welcome to March's Garden Tour. So today we're going to be looking at my two three tier rise gardens with a quick glimpse over at my personal garden, but I don't really spend too much time on that one unless something really interesting is going on in there. I just have some basil, thyme, baby cilantro, and then rosemary I feel like does better in soil. Uh, I just I like the way the plant tastes better too. I've tried to grow it hydroponically and I just don't really like it that well. So I have a rosemary over there in a pot as well. So no pests so far, so that's good. All right, so today um, things are kind of winding down for some of the plants. My cucumbers at the top here are coming to an end. Uh, I have a new one started though, but we'll take a look at those. And there's a lot to say about the cucumbers because some new stuff happened that's never happened to me before while growing these, at least that I noticed. And I thought it was really interesting, so I'll show you guys that. Uh, we have our cherry tomatoes right behind me. And then this bottom shelf, if you watch my tomato varieties video where I talk about the tomato varieties that I want to try and ones I've tried and wasn't really too happy with. Uh, this bottom shelf, I'm really trying to find a good tomato that fits down here that's like kind of a slicer. That'd be good to slice for like sandwiches and stuff. I think I'm really close to finding one and we'll talk about it once we get up to my nursery briefly because I just put the seed in. Um, but other than that, we have another tomato down here that is a slicer that's doing okay. And I'll show you guys that one too because I think it has some blossom end rot on it. Uh, but it hasn't gotten worse, so maybe there's enough calcium in the system now because that's usually what causes that, so we'll see. Uh, for the other garden over here, I really wanted to do this garden tour about seven days ago because I hadn't harvested my cauliflower yet and the one broccoli had, uh, but I had strep throat, so <laughs> here we are. I can finally talk long enough to make a video. Um, in my last garden tour, I actually thought these were all four baby cauliflowers, uh, turns out I did two baby cauliflowers and two broccoli. This should teach me to label my plants, but again, <laughs> I don't always do that. Um, my lettuce is getting close to needing to be harvested. I actually have a full container in the fridge right now. Y'all, lettuce, like, if you're going to grow anything hydroponically, you'll just never buy it in the store again. It's great. And it's super easy to grow. Uh, and then we have spinach. My spinach looks really nice. You can kind of see some of it right here, uh, and I've already harvested a lot off of it, so the plants look a little bare, but the plant, the, they're doing so well. Uh, and then a couple beans, and my big bean is gone because it was finally done. Okay, so let's start the garden tour where I normally started with my, actually, rewind. Okay, let's start the garden tour actually in the opposite direction. Let's, let's actually start it with the sprout garden today and then we'll go into our blossom garden. All right, everybody, so let's go ahead and start with the spinach. I put the seed pack here because I wanted to remind myself that this is actually a new variety for me. So my other spinach seeds were from Johnny's and I used the Space Hybrid and it was fabulous, but my seeds were almost three years old and the germination rate had completely plummeted. So. I actually got some new spinach seeds. This is called the Renegade. It's supposed to be, I believe, a slower bolting variety. Uh, but either way, it's done really well. So I've already harvested quite a few of the spinach leaves. And I always like to look down into the middle. This is where you'll start to see the bolt form. It'll actually, might even be getting close to that. Um, but you'll see the flowers starting to form in the middle. The other thing to keep in mind with spinach bolting is it'll bolt really fast if your water's warm, like my water stays nice and cool, but also with your lights. So spinach actually will respond to bolting based on how much light it's receiving, and I can't control that in this system, so we just go with it. But I do love growing spinach. 
I do have a spinach germination video I'm still going to share uh, about how to germinate spinach most effectively, so I will get that up later. All right, so let's go ahead and take a peek at the nursery. There's not much really to see here. Um, I have two green bean or two bush beans in here. I have some green onions, and I have the, and I also have the serendipity tomato in here. So this is the one we talked about in the tomato varieties video. So go ahead and check that video out if you want to learn more about uh, plant varieties that are tomato varieties that I want to grow. I'm probably going to post it after this garden tour. All right, but this one I'm going to be planting in the blossom garden. You can see how tall it gets, about up to 18 inches tall, which is just the height of the bottom level here. So we'll see how it does. All right, and then over here we have the bush beans, the muscat bush beans. A lot of flowers on the top of this one. It's doing pretty well. This one was kind of crowded out, so it kind of got of a late start, but it's really coming together. And then another one here. And I really hope that, like last time, I get a nice big full one. I got so many bush beans out of those plants. It was crazy. All right, let's look down below. Put my seeds back. Okay, so my two staple lettuce, which I have a lettuce harvesting video, which you can learn more about the lettuces I like to grow. But here's the bronze arrowhead. And then I have my Paris Island Koss here. I mean, look at the size, just to give you a comparison. I've already harvested off of just these two plants and filled up an entire Tupperware container. And this one's getting close to being kind of done. Another way to check is by taking the leaf off and looking for like that milky stuff. Uh, but yeah, this I love these lettuce plants. And you can see that I've gotten a little bit better about succession planting. So once these come out, these two will go into their spot and then I'll have two new lettuces. So here's my celery back here. I believe this one's from Baker Creek, actually. Uh, and then I, this is a broccoli, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so let's take a look at the bottom. All right, so we'll talk about this broccoli in just a second. There's not much else on this level. I have another broccoli down here. Here are my green onions, which are over 18 inches tall. And then I have another broccoli here, and you can actually see this the broccoli head forming here it's pretty small still okay so let's take a look at this one I really wanted to film this video before I chopped this off but if you look closely down there you can see I've already cut the main head off of the broccoli and this is a butter stem hybrid and it's a cut and come again so when you cut this middle one and you can actually do this with regular broccoli heads too uh, but this one actually has more of these offshoots so when you cut off the center, which I'll put a picture up for that, these little offshoots will start to grow and you'll get like broccolini sized broccoli. And then down here in the middle, like this is where I had that cauliflower. So I'll go ahead and put a picture up on the screen to show you guys that cauliflower because it was amazing. And I had two of them that looked like that. Time to move to the other garden. But before we do that, I actually wanna show you guys really quickly my composter. So this, this brand here for the composter has been super great. Uh, I love this thing. Let's take a look. And then the sound when the lid closes is so satisfying. But yes, yeah, so this is my composter. It uses heat, but it also uses microorganisms as well. So it does a really good job of breaking down food waste. And I actually will use this composter not only just for my food scraps, but also like when I'm trimming plants, I'll put like, you know, the leaves in. I try not to put like, you'll see in a minute, but like tomatoes, I don't put tomato stems in there because they get super stringy, but one more peek. It also has, you can kind of see right there, metal paddles, and that's kind of how it turns the compost. But you can see those like long, um, <laughs> I'll say my finger, those long strands, those are food pieces that haven't been properly decomposed. They might just take longer. And a lot of that is stems. All right, so let's take a look at the Blossom Garden. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys quickly the cucumbers, the lavender, and the tomato, and then I'm actually gonna put the camera down and talk about the cucumbers a little bit because there's some interesting things that happened. But first, here's my lavender. It's been hiding under all these cucumbers, which is why it has a little bit of that brown on the back. It got a little bit wet. Uh, but look at these beautiful new lavender shoots. 
I might cut off these older ones, but um, we'll see. But yeah, so I love lavender. It does take a long time to grow, uh, but I'm going to keep this in here. Last one I had for over a year. And then obviously we have our tomato, and I use these clips. So I, these are like vine clips, and they stick onto the front of the garden. They're not like, they're pretty strong, but something super heavy will pull them off. But I'll tie string on here, and that keeps these really heavy cherry tomatoes from just flopping over. Okay, so let's think, take another look at the cucumber. So you can obviously see I have some cucumbers ripening here. Now this is sans one vine. I actually cut a vine out of this cucumber. Let me actually zoom out a little bit for you guys. So I cut a vine out of the cucumber because you're going to notice that some of them are a little deformed. And I think that this plant just was trying to do too much at once. So we'll talk about that in a second. But now I just have one vine over here from the main stem and then this vine over here. And then you can see where I cut this one off. I literally just did this like two days ago because I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sit you guys down and we're going to talk about this cucumber a little bit because I learned a couple things. Okay, everybody. So I wanted to show you guys some stuff with the cucumber because some really weird stuff happened with the cucumbers this time. And I've grown these things a lot. Okay, so you, the first thing I wanted to point out is that it's totally okay if cucumbers shrivel up. So the plant is only going to grow so many cucumbers, even though it's making tons of baby cucumbers, only a small portion of them are actually going to ripen. So this whole backside of the vine is empty. There's just nothing growing on there. I think I have one lonely cucumber in the back somewhere. Okay, so a couple things that I wanted to point out. On these, on these cucumber vines, you're going to see that generally, here's a good example, there's generally like multiple cucumbers growing per node. So this particular node of cucumbers has, there's three of them on there. One, two, three. So what you can do to kind of help with your cucumber fruiting and like ma the maturity of your cucumbers is you can actually pull off some people will pull off two and leave one. You can pull off one and leave two. So that's one way to kind of help get your cucumbers to focus their energy into just specific cucumbers instead of trying to grow all of them at once. You're also going to sometimes get this like deformed shape so you can kind of see it's not uniform. Generally, like when you grow these outside, that's from watering issues. In here, it's probably just from nutrients. And the fact that this cucumber plant is trying to grow so many cucumbers at once. So I rarely ever have three. I've never had three vines per cucumber plant. I tried that and I'm not going to do it again. So that's my first lesson learned. Um, that's the main lesson learned here is having three vines for the cucumber is just too much. It just, the, the plant just could not focus its energy well enough. And I actually had a bit of a about the same yield, but the, the cucumbers were smaller and more of them were deformed. So I think from here on out, trimming this mini me down to just two vines is the way to go. Okay, the other thing I want to show you, this isn't really a lesson, just it's kind of crazy. Uh, so I've never seen this cucumber do this, but it actually grew. It's growing. There's more than one. There's actually two more down here. It's growing male flowers. So this is an example of what a male, now I don't know if it's truly a male flower, it just doesn't have the actual fruit piece behind it. So like this would be a female where it has the actual cute baby cucumber behind it. And you can really see the difference here. So I've never had this plant because it's parthenocarpic. It, I've never seen it grow male flowers before. So I think that's really interesting. Uh, so again, lesson learned, mini me should be trimmed down to two vines, not three. It also is a crazy jungle up here, so. All right, so let's move on for the rest of the tour. Okay, so on the shelf below, I have another mini me cucumber started. So you can see my new baby cucumber going. So I like to, again, always have a replacement. This is my red robin. And you can see I had to get kind of creative with the strings because this thing is so heavy with fruit. I mean, look at how many, I'm not doing a very good job of showing you guys, but there are so many tomatoes in there. There we go. There's a good image. 
it's crazy. It's just an absolute exorbitant number of tomatoes. You can kind of see underneath it. So I kind of, I put an empty net pot. I put an empty net pot here and then I attached one of my trellises to it. It's actually holding the weight because this thing was leaning forward and it was also tipping to the side that way. So this is holding it from doing that. So crazy tomato. Okay, and then we have, just like before, we have our two mini Siams, so one in the back, one in the front. And this is what you're looking for with like tomato leaves. So no curling, no discoloration, except for on older leaves, you might actually start to see some of this discoloration and that is totally fine. This is perfectly normal. So this is not like rust or anything, no disease that I've noticed. Uh, but yeah, so very healthy plant. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the bottom shelf. Okay, so here's my jalapeno. It's kind of growing really slowly, and I actually kind of like that it's a little more stunted because it gets really tall, and I don't like to have to trim it if I don't have to. It has a couple flowers on it. I've actually been plucking a few of them off just to get you know it to focus more on the actual leaves, but I love this tomato, and, or jalapeno. And look at this variegation. I don't know if this is supposed to be happening. And I don't think it's like a problem, but I'll have to look into that to make sure it's nothing. Because it does look like pest damage, doesn't it? But I know there's no pests in here, so kind of interesting how it's doing that. Sometimes jalapeno leaves do weird things. I've even had the leaves, like, literally flip over. So, and the plant's always really healthy, so I think it'll be okay. So here's my Dora. It's kind of being hidden by this much larger leaf from my other tomato up here, but... What I'm waiting for are the tomatoes to blush. So like this one's blushing, this one's blushing. You can kind of see the difference between like one that has a hint of yellow versus fully green. So I'm kind of waiting for this cluster to change. That cluster might be sacrificed because I kind of just want to get this plant out of here. It's been in here for over eight months, so I'm kind of ready for it to leave. And I want to start putting those other tomatoes in my other video we talked about in here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Thorburn. I actually labeled it Thorburn's terracotta. Okay, so this is a slicer tomato. And I want to show you the tomato first. I mean, it's beautiful. Like, it's really cool. Make Sorry, my camera work today is not great. Um, it's beautiful. It's like it's kind of neat having an actual slicer tomato in here. I have another one, a baby one. Oop, there it is. Right there. But what I noticed, and I gotta be really careful because I don't want it to fall off. But if you look up underneath, there's like this little brown patch. I know it's not focusing very well. You guys see that like little brown patch? Yeah, so. I'll put a picture up on the screen too. That might be blossom end rot, but I'm not, but maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to keep the tomato because you can still eat it with blossom end rot as long as it doesn't get too bad. And let's see what it does. Why don't we take a look at one of the flowers? Let's see. Obviously, just like most tomato flowers, it's kind of hidden up in there. Got some flowers back there. There we go. And then I have a few more peeking through the top right over there on the left side. We'll talk more about pollinating tomatoes later, some tips and tricks, but it's pretty simple. I might just do a short on it, but it's pretty easy to pollinate. They're pretty much self-pollinating, so you pretty, you're essentially just getting the pollen to fall out of the male part into the tip where the female part is. Okay, so I'm going to set you guys down for a quick second and we'll wrap this up. Okay, so we're just going to wrap up our garden tour today, but I'm really happy with where the gardens are right now, and I've gotten really good, like I said, at trying to do some of that succession planning because when you're growing in such a small space, it's nice to have plants all the time. Okay, so really quickly about that Thorburns terracotta. So that brown spot underneath, like I said, could be blossom end rot. So essentially what's happening is that the fruit is just not developing fully. It's generally a calcium deficiency. And I did learn that you can actually still eat tomatoes with, well, I guess there's other 
foods that get it too, but right now I'm only familiar with tomatoes. Um, there's, you can eat the fruit that has blossom end rot. You just have to cut it off unless it gets really bad. So I'm actually going to leave that because I've worked pretty hard to get that little Thorburn terracotta to grow. So I want to see if I get something out of it. So like we said, we're going to push most likely. Here's what's going to happen. This door is probably going to come out next weekend. I just, I don't know how much longer I want it in there. And I did just germinate the serendipity tomato, which should fit. It'll probably be about this size of the Thorburns. It should fit in this bottom level. So this one's in the nursery right now. So my plan is when this tomato is big enough to come out of the nursery, it's got its second set of leaves started, it's got a root going, I'm gonna stick it in the garden. Once that day happens, that door is out of here. <laughs> so I think that's my plan. I'll keep the door up until my serendipity is ready. And I'm super excited, guys. This one turns purple. So I'm pretty stoked on seeing how this turns out. And I think it'll do better than the Thorburn that's an heirloom. Like I talk about in my tomato video, I just don't know if heirlooms are great for hydroponics because hydroponic systems, you know, their feet are in water all the time uh, and you can get rot issues and things like that. And sometimes I just think heirlooms just are so sensitive to those like changing water temperature, although mine stays pretty consistent, but changing pH levels, my pH fluctuates a lot and even nutrient uptake from the other plants. So I just think it might be too much for these heirlooms. <laughs> all right, so I think that's it for today. Let's take one last quick peek at my sleeping Sylvie and then I'll see you guys later.